And you thought Brightburn was a grim take on superheroes. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons to binge the boys. For this list, we're taking a look at why you need to watch this Amazon original series ASAP. Number 10. It's an adult superhero show. The greatest superhero team the world's ever seen. The Seven. Given its subject matter and title, some may tune in expecting innocent superhero entertainment for the whole family. This adaptation of the comic series by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson more than earns its TVMA rating, however, featuring an explicit warning at the beginning of every episode. With its over-the-top mayhem, use of four-letter words, and several moments of sheer depravity, The Boys makes Deadpool look like an after-school special at times. As graphic as the series gets, it doesn't come off as gratuitous or exploitative. Name's Butcher. Billy Butcher. Listen, I was thinking that uh, you and me should have a little bit of a chat. It services the tone of the show and provides a unique take on the superhero genre. If you're looking for something grittier than the MCU, but more fun than the DCEU's earlier entries, the boys will answer the call. Number 9. A Dark Sense of Humor If Watchmen had an even more satirical edge, you'd get the boys. The series was developed by Eric Kripke, who blended comedy with dark fantasy on Supernatural. Also among the key creative forces are producers Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, who previously brought us Preacher, another black comedy based on a comic book series. The Boys echoes a couple of movies that Rogen and Goldberg have made as well. Like Pineapple Express, the series centers on a ragtag group of misfits who make some powerful enemies, narrowly escaping death around every turn. Who are you? A water balloon filled with blood and meat. The show is even reminiscent of This Is The End in its depiction of irresponsible, self-absorbed public figures. Furthermore, it encompasses their signature shock humor that sneaks up when you least expect it. Shooters on 31. All right, sit tight. Elevators? Number 8. It's World Building The first episode plops us right into the middle of a universe where superheroes are a facet of everyday life. In that sense, it's a bit like The Incredibles, albeit much less optimistic. Can I, can I get a selfie? Of course you can. In this universe, saving the day is really more of a side gig for the A-list heroes. Making public appearances and jumpstarting movie franchises are their primary duties, with Vought International having a firm grasp on all things media. That is our job, our honor. We are Vought. We make heroes. Super. Without going into too much backstory, we are immediately given a strong understanding of how this world operates and how it parallels our own in many respects. This world only grows more fascinating as these so-called heroes start showing their true colors, giving us a peek at what goes on backstage. You know, like I could be in the van with the thing and like, you know, he's down the hall to the left, like I can... Yeah, look, son, I, uh, I think it's best that I take it from here, you know what I mean? Number 7. It's Commentary on Celebrities even if you took out the superhero angle, The Boys would be a highly relevant series about how the rich and famous sometimes abuse their star power. We often idolize celebrities as if they were superheroes who can do no wrong. What? <laughs> I mean, you said you had a crush on me. I figured that, you know... Now more than ever, it's becoming clearer that celebrities can not only be flawed, but also that some are downright despicable. In The Boys, the superhero team known as The Seven appear practically perfect when the cameras are rolling. You ever touch me again, I will burn your eyes out. Unbeknownst to their fans, they're actually capable of harassment, drug use, and murder. Celebrities may not have superpowers in real life, but many still feel invincible due to their status. Once the public sees a celebrity for who they really are, however, they are no longer untouchable. Number 6. Its Take on Current Social Issues In the first episode, a member of the Seven forces new recruit Starlight into an unspeakable situation behind closed doors. Whoa, 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 hey, wait, 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 wait. It's just a question of how bad you want to be in the Seven. Realizing that someone she looked up to is really a pig, Starlight becomes confused, disgusted, and angered all at once. If I say so, you know, you'd be out of here. Especially since you attacked me. I what? With her job being threatened, though, she sees little alternative but to comply. Based on what we've seen on the news and social media in the early 21st century, the abuse Starlight endures here is all too common. You and me, you just roll with the punches for like 
three minutes, maybe. It's not a big deal. Even with extraordinary powers, Starlight feels powerless to say no in this eerily realistic moment. This instigates one of the show's most compelling and relevant storylines, as Starlight finds that sometimes the most heroic thing a person can do is speak up. Only then may the cycle finally stop. Yeah, don't worry. I'll be fine. I'm here. And I'm not going anywhere. Number five, it's message about authority. Whereas some heroes like Starlight genuinely want to make the world a better place, others are only interested in possessing power and the perks that come with it. In most cases, the Seven end up costing more lives than they save due to negligence, recklessness, and disregard for human life. Oh, that was a big one! Everything's fine, don't worry about it! This isn't too different from the real-life controversies that various police officers have found themselves in. It also applies to politicians who put their own agendas above the needs of others, allowing innocent people to get trampled along the way. 123 brave souls lost in an instant, in a senseless act of violence. The Boys demonstrates what happens when the masses blindly follow authority. When mild-mannered Huey Campbell faces a personal tragedy, he's forced to choose between keeping his hands clean or raising a fist to corruption. Number four, Homelander. The Seven's leader, Homelander, seems like Captain America meets Superman at first glance. <laughs> and I trust we never have to have this conversation again. Imagine that Captain America were a Hydra sleeper agent and Superman went around snapping people's necks, though. Uh, well, maybe that's not too hard to imagine. The point is, what if a national treasure were actually humanity's greatest threat? That basically sums up Homelander, who is the true villain of this story. I got excited, I'm sorry. I'm sure you are. You know the drill, he shot at us first. Actor Anthony Starr turns in a chillingly effective performance, portraying Homelander as a humble and charismatic do-gooder in public. When he's not putting on a show, Homelander is an egomaniac with sadistic tendencies. Oh, middle of the Atlantic. Yep. No man's land. You can't operate on foreign soil, but a plane hijacked over international waters. If you intercept, no one will protest. His scenes with Vought Vice President Madeleine Stilwell, played by Elizabeth Shue in a comeback role, are easily among the most disturbing moments you'll see on television. Number three, Carl Urban as Billy Butcher. From Star Trek to Dread, Carl Urban is one of our most consistently entertaining cult actors. The New Zealand native was born to play Billy Butcher, the leader of the boys who doesn't need powers to pack a punch. Urban brings his signature tough demeanor and wily wit to the character, but there's more to Billy than just profanities and brute force. I, I don't know how to blackmail anybody. Huey, you've done a murder. Comparatively speaking, this will be a piece of cake. His vendetta against the Seven is driven by Homelander's ties to his wife, who mysteriously disappeared. All right, Frenchie, find it. You're in the clear. Billy thus treats all soups with extreme prejudice, believing that even those who claim to have noble intentions will eventually turn wicked. Although we empathize and identify with Billy's motivations, the lengths he'll go to for revenge demonstrates why there are no pure heroes on this show. That would have taken me forever to work that one out. Good job. Number two, it's shocking twists and turns. Early on in the pilot, we're introduced to a character who will seemingly be a mainstay of the series. Don't you ever besmirch Billy. Before we even know it, though, that character is removed from the equation like a fly that's been swatted. There's no case. She was in the street. Be like if a bus hit That her. she was one step I, off the curb. Huey, look, I saw look. it. This shocking twist sets the tone for a show that regularly takes us to unpredictable places. In superhero media, it's common for characters to wear a mask in order to conceal their secret identities. In The Boys, however, it's Vought that wears the mask. What appears to be a Hall of Justice is truly a legion of doom that houses numerous dark secrets. I'll always be watching over you. In addition to telling a well-crafted mystery, The Boys is also full of jaw-dropping moments that'll leave you asking, did that really just happen? Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one, it reflects our current obsession with superheroes. The Boys takes place in a world where superheroes have dominated pop culture. Without crime, with liberty and justice for all, that's within our reach, thanks to the 200 plus superheroes in the Vought family. 
With so many bankable heroes at their disposal, companies like Vought can keep churning out blockbuster movies with no end in sight. Sound familiar? While The Boys was evidently made by people who appreciate the superhero genre, the show also mirrors how it's kind of taken over everything. Vought even resembles a few corporations that have gained a reputation for possessing too much power. Some would argue that superheroes need to hang up their capes already, while others have yet to experience any kind of fatigue. If they let us into the military, then this will never happen again. That is my solemn promise to you. Wherever you stand on the debate, there isn't another superhero show in this oversaturated market quite like this one. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.